Great civilizations are built upon resilient <coughs> food systems. And Paddy Rice is one of the oldest, most productive, most resilient of them all. But I'm going to argue that many millions of people in Southeast Asia are now suffering from food insecurity because of rapid urbanization. And then I'd like to say what I think we can do about it. First, though, I need to say just a few things about paddy rice, traditional paddy rice. Point number one, it provides good nutrition. The paddies are sourced not just of the rice, but of fruit and vegetables and fish, many other things. Point number two, the paddies provide ecosystem services. Those paddies are a vast reservoir for water. And so the dangers of flooding and landslides are greatly reduced. It's not an exaggeration to say that without paddies, the large cities would be impossible in the monsoon regions of Southeast Asia. Point number three, paddies feed a lot of people, but they also need a lot of people to produce that food. And so we find in Southeast Asia, where traditional paddies were planted, the highest rural densities anywhere in the world. So much so that we find a kind of settlement, the Desakota, that you find nowhere else. It's a rural population at densities that you find in cities. But in the last few decades, <coughs> there's been a remarkable transition with new agricultural varieties, with the use of fertilizers, with more mechanization, you no longer need so many people to produce that food. And because of those vast numbers of people, millions of them have moved into the cities to earn their living there. It's no surprise that the fastest growing cities, the largest mega cities, are to be found in Southeast Asia. And, and here's the problem, that when people move into a city, of course, they can no, no, no longer produce their own food. And the urban poor are suffering from poor nutrition, stunting um, micronutrient deficiencies. And another problem, as those people abandon their traditional agriculture, the paddies fall into disrepair, and you get greater problems of flooding and landslides, which we've seen in Thailand, for example, parts of Myanmar. And in the cities themselves, they're drained, they're pumped, the land level goes down, and the flooding becomes an even greater problem. So what can we do about it? I'm convinced we have to provide people with the benefits of urban life, the opportunities of urban life, and still retain the possibility to produce food. And that means not large cities. It means connected networks of compact towns in an urban matrix. And at Future Cities Laboratory Program, my architect colleagues are planning to build just such a settlement, a prototype, in <coughs> Indonesia. They've designed housing suited for the purpose, using local materials, decentralized technologies to generate electricity, um, to manage waste water, and so on. And they're also wanting to build the local economies, developing businesses which are suitable for this more urban way of life. So market gardening, for example, or growing vegetables using aeroponics, or farming mushrooms, or aquaculture, or fish farming. And of course, developing the ability to process these food products locally and to market them. Now, all of these technologies, uh, all of this is possible thanks to new decentralizing technologies. I've mentioned electricity generation. Uh, waste management, water processing. But arguably, the most important technology of all is going to be information technology. Because this allows the farmer to connect with their urban markets and so to build their businesses. And let me end just by emphasizing how important this is. In the next 20 years or so, tens, maybe hundreds of millions of people will move from the rural to the urban. And if they all move into megacities, it'll be impossible to solve the problems that I've described. We really uh, need to develop urban rural systems that strengthen the local communities, ensure food security, develop the local economy, and provide these ecosystem services. And it is possible, but it will require concerted effort from government, from financial agencies, 
and of course from the private sector.